Hey what's up guys today in this video we are going to look at two more functionalities that I have developed in our storefront which is first of all after the registration of a user right there is this need of verifying that account so I have done that and after that the user will be able to log in as well so let's get started and see how we have handle those two scenarios so if we go to the admin section i'm inside demo.vendor.io if i launch the admin ui and try to log in go to the customers i see these three users this can change when you are looking at things because what happens is this particular application or the database resets every day at one point so whatever you're doing tomorrow it will come back to its original state so we don't have any user which i have created what i will do over here is just try to quickly register a user so with these details in place let's try and hit the sign up button and now i'm here in this screen where it says enter your verification token now obviously because this is a demo store it will not send you a verification token through an email but as you can see I have created this user which is in the state of registered but ideally we would want it to be in the state of verified. So I can figure out the token based on the job queues because it says that send email it was done however the email is not actually sent but this verification token is something which I can pick from here so let's go inside this form and fill that up and do verify so with that in place now if I go to my customers listing I'll see Amitav Roy is actually a verified customer which means now I have a proper account okay now let me get out of this log out because what happens is both of them can share the same auth token so let's just get rid of this and let me try and log in now so once i log in the only way right now for me to understand whether the user has logged in or not is if you go to the application tab in your developer console go to localhost auth token is this this basically signifies that the login has been done successfully if I close it out come over here and now if I refresh hmm, that's weird I think the password was wrong I need to do the basic validations but now I would assume this is coming properly right so yes the token is created now let's quickly review what is the code so inside the registration page I have made one small change which is previously this registration form was not taking any parameters or rather any props but what I am doing right now is I am sending back a prop called on success from this form and when I am getting that prop over here inside this user register page I have a closure uh, in this particular thing whenever this prop is being sent right uh, this function will get called and I am pushing the user to this particular route how that is happening well I am passing this function to registration form okay this is how the a function is passed as a prop so as you can see this function says interface props on success it's a function which doesn't return anything it's a void okay and I'm taking that function as a prop and in my handle submit what I have done is if the response of this mutation doesn't have any errors I first reset the form and then I call the function which is being passed as a prop so what is the function that has been passed as a prop this particular function is what will get executed 
and that takes me to the verify token. Similarly, if I go to the user slash verify token page, it follows generally the same structure. So as I told you, right, once you get hold of one particular page, the rest of the things keep flowing very quickly. So I have a form component. Okay, that form component is sending a prop called on success. That, pr that prop is nothing but a function where the user is redirected to the home page. And if I look at this form, it's a very typical formic based form. So let me quickly walk you through. So again, interface values and I have a prop which is on success function. Okay, I'm taking that prop here and I have a mutation called user token verification mutation. Okay, those of you who haven't followed, I would suggest you go through the video. It will make sense, but I will try to explain things again a little bit so that you know those who, who have directly jumped to this video may not feel completely out of place. So, so this is the component which we have. This is a mutation which we are, and this is the hook that is available. So in this mutation hook, I am passing this GraphQL query. What does this GraphQL query do? It is a mutation which takes the token as a parameter and then it passes that to this uh, mutation called verify customer account. Okay, it requires a token which I'm sending over here and then there are these different states. On success, it returns the ID and identifier on different error codes. It is sending me these informations. Okay. That mutation is imported over here. I'm taking that as a function called verify. This is my initial value for the form because I'm going to use formic. So as you can see, the form init values is of type values where I have said that it only has token, which is of type string. So I initiate that value over here. Okay. I've defined that object and that object is later on used in the formic thing. So let's see. This is initial values set to form init values. And then we have the on submit function, which calls the handle submit function over here. So handle submit is an async function. It takes the value, it automatically gets the values, set submitting and react form from the formic helpers, which is the second parameter, right? Now, when the handle submit button is clicked, first I'm doing a basic hygiene check, set submitting to false so that it doesn't submit again. Okay. This console shouldn't have been there. Let us remove this anyways. And then I'm waiting for this verify mutation to work. Like any typical mutation, you call that function, you pass variables. And in that variables, I'm sending the values as is because my expected key and from the form, I'm getting the same thing. Similar to our registration thing, if I don't get any error from the response, I reset the form on success function is getting called, which is passed from the props. Let's quickly look at the form component, the markup. This is my formic, which is getting instantiated over here. I have errors and touched. The form element was created. And then I have this field component, field error component. I have already explained what the field error component does. Um, at a high level, it takes the error and the touched object and it shows a red kind of a thing in case there are any validation errors. Okay, this is the only field and then I have the submit button. On click of the submit button, obviously this handle, handle submit function is getting called because inside the formic component we have declared that, right? So yeah, after that, they go to the home page. Fair enough. Now, once the verification is done, let us concentrate on what is happening on the login page. So let's go to login index.tsx. Very similar to the other two pages, which is registration and verified token. We have a similar structure where login form is a component which we are calling on the login page. Let's quickly look at the login page again, just to be sure we are in same page. This is the form. Okay and it is sending a function as a prop on success prop where 
once the success function is getting called, it will take the user to the home page, right? Now let's look at the login form then. Oops, I don't need this one. Like any other form, this is again very repeatable code. I have an interface called values where I expect that username and password will be there, both are string. I have defined that I expect props, a function called on success, which is of type void, and then my function or rather the component starts. This is the mutation that we are going to execute. Let's look at the query. What does it say? We are saying that it's a mutation where parameter username string, which is required and password string is required. We call the mutation login username dollar username password dollar password. On success, I will get the ID and identifier very similar to what we get with the verify token. Then we have those error codes which are handled over here. For example, invalid credentials error, not verified error, native auth strategy error and error result. Okay. This is, these are things which you will have to handle in the front end if you want to properly um, handle every aspect of your application. I have just done the basic ones. Okay. But yeah, you, you should implement it if you are looking to create a full fledged storefront. Now, once the mutations are taken place, uh, sorry, taken care of, right? We have the initial values. I'm creating this object where I'm defining the object's type as values, which was defined over here. Okay, so I have username and password. This value is then sent to the formic component as initial values. As you can see over here, this is very similar to the uh, token verification form as well. And on submit, we have handle submit function as well. So it gets, it's an async function, it gets the value, the set submitting, reset form, right? Before we submit, we set submit to false so that the user cannot submit again, multiple submits are stopped. Then we are calling the login function, we are passing the variables, the values, right? And once we get the response, we check whether we have any error or not. If we don't have any error, we are assuming that it's a success, we reset the form, we call the on success. The on success basically then takes the user to the home page. Let's now quickly look at the markup dev. Then we have form. Form we have instantiated using these two things. We have errors and touch. Form tag is opened. And then we have very standard thing. This is the field component from Formic. This is the field error which I have created. I pass the errors and the touched and the name username, right? Similarly, the password is done. The only change over here is the type is mentioned as password so that the, the um, asterisk th thing come in instead of actually showing the text field, right? And then we have the submit button. So with this in place, what happens is when this function is, sub uh, when this form is submitted, this particular function is getting called, this function calls the mutation over here with the variables and if the mutation results in a success if we don't have any errors right then it takes the user back to the home page and that's how during this entire process we get this token now i had explained how this token is forming at that point obviously it would have made a little diff it would have been a bit difficult to understand what is happening so i will show you again what is happening over here because this is the code which is responsible for creating this local way local storage variable, right? So again, just a refresher. We have a constant called auth token. It can come from an environment variable as well. Okay, we create an HTTP link with the vendor storefront URL. We create an Apollo link. This Apollo link has you know basic code like anything which is forwarded is mapped. Okay, and then we are checking whether we have this auth header in our response or not. If the auth header is present, right, then what we do is, as it as the comment says, if the auth token has been returned by the vendor server, we store it in local storage. And that's how the auth token, which is this, right, the key, you can see this is the token and this is the value which was stored. Okay. Again, this is not something which I have written. This is there in the vendor official documentation. You can look for it. Okay. 
with this information in place so we have the http link we have the afterware link okay and then we create the apollo client the apollo client first does this link apollo link from and in the context we are saying that the auth token is local storage dot get item okay and this is the token key name if we find the token then we add that to the headers as authorization bear auth token otherwise it won't do anything right and then we have the afterware link and the http link the caching is in memory so that's how we are configuring the apollo client and this apollo client is what is added in the app.tsx as the apollo provider this is something which i have explained in my previous video but i thought it made sense to give you the context again when we are looking at the login thing because once the user logs in this token is saved in the local storage and in subsequent requests you know this is how um, the application understands whether the user is a logged in user or not and how the auth token will be used in subsequent requests to you know um, set the user context for the server as well okay so yeah that's about it guys that's what i wanted to cover in this video we saw how we are now able to verify a user how we are able to log in as a user you know an authenticated and verified user right and we went through the code so thanks for watching if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel